Out of statement to say his political life has many twists and turns. Former NDP MP Sven Robinson's fight for social justice and as an inspiration for gay rights as the first homosexual MP to come out is the subject of a new biography by Graeme Trulove. Sven Robinson, the subject of that biography, joins me live here in the foyer of the House of Commons. Welcome back to the Commons. Great to be back in the old stomping grounds, Tom. I know. It's been a long time. <laughs> you know, the last I heard of you, you, you resigned, you had that a ring theft issue and it just seemed to be just a sudden a dramatic end to a long political career. Did you ever figure out what made you do that? Uh, I wish I could say I did. Um, I really haven't but uh, you know you pick yourself up, you move forward and that's what I've done Don. I'm working now with uh, the Global Fund uh, to fight AIDS, TB and malaria based in Geneva. My partner and Max and I have been there for about five years and uh, you know I had 25 years uh, in Parliament. It was, a, it was a, an extraordinary experience. It was a great journey. Uh, hopefully made a bit of a difference. Uh, it didn't end the way I would have wanted it to end, but uh, um, I've tried to, to make a difference since then in the lives of people who uh, I'm working with. Tell me about the biography itself. Why now? I mean, why didn't you do your own autobiography? Well, I was actually approached a number of times to do an autobiography, but you know, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. And uh, when Graham Trulove approached me and uh, said, "Look, I think I think your story should be told," mm -hmm. and he actually said, "I'm prepared to take a year out of my life and uh, and talk to people, interview people." Uh, I obviously gave him access to my papers, the archives, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Warts and all. I mean, there's you know there's lots of interesting stories in the book here, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, in the end uh, that was a better way to do it. It was painful to read it in places. In places, what, sure. What, what areas caused you pain? Well, I mean, I'll uh, dwell on the happy one later. But <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, obviously there were there were a number of, uh, of, of tough um, memories. Uh, uh, Sue Rodriguez, uh, yeah, you know, just a, an amazing suicide. woman. You'll remember the the story of Sue fighting for the right to die with dignity. Uh, I had the honor of. I mean, she wasn't just working with her, but a close friend. And so mm -hmm. reliving that was, was painful, but still inspiring to, to remember what, what she stood for. Um, the ring, of course, was incredibly painful. That was devastating. But uh, uh, also lots of, uh, lots of stories that, frankly, I'd kind of forgotten about that uh, <laughs> reminded me of hopefully the fact I was able to make a difference on issues like the Charter of Rights when I was here. That's, that's what struck me uh, about your life in some ways. You worked with the government power. You, you were never in power obviously as an NDP, but you seem to work well with the powers that be to get things accomplished. And I'm wondering what you think now about what you see in politics, because it's it's so different. There's such a stark divides from that aisle that no one seems to work together anymore. You know, that's a great question, Don, and, and it's something that I've thought a lot about, because Jack Layton, of course, really tried to make a difference in in how we do politics in this country, and, and he did reach across the divide. Um, I tried to do the same thing, as you said. I mean, I worked with members of parliament from the Conservative Party. Um, if you read the book, you'll see uh, the interview Brian Mulroney. Brian talks about how we were able to, you know, find some common ground on a number of important issues. Uh, uh, same thing with some of the Liberals in the House. Um, I guess, you know, and I hesitate to wade into Canadian politics now, but I just don't see that happening as much. And I think the Canadian people are desperate for, for, for sort of trying to find some common ground on issues and say, how do we, how do we make a difference instead of just kind of the, the sparring? And then, and then you see the, the kind of Rob Ford stuff in Toronto and you shake your head and you just say, what that does is it just, it, it makes people cynical about the whole political process. What do you make of that Rob Ford situation? Like, I mean, <laughs> politicians are going bad, it seems, at a fast pace these days. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think we, we can generalize. The vast majority of politicians are, are honorable people. It's one of the great things that, about being a member of parliament is that you have a chance to serve your country and sadly when when one or two bad apples uh, you know make a mistake uh, it tends to reflect on everybody and certainly Rob Ford you know is, is in that situation now but uh, I had the privilege of working with a heck of a lot of really fine members of Parliament and that's what I'd like to remember you're done with politics I'm done uh, I'm uh, I'm working at the international level on helping to save lives with HIV AIDS TB and malaria and uh, I love that. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, I don't know if you'd fit in here anymore, friend. Anyway, all right. <laughs> Thanks very much. Appreciate you coming on and talking. Good to be about with it. you. Don.